Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you have been enjoying the stories told on this channel feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons below and help the channel grow. Now onto today's episode. In this episode, we will take a look into the life and story of former Bonino family boss Vincent Bastiano. Bastiano was seen as a fast, rising mobster with the potential to bring the family back on track. However, Vinny's potential would be cut short after his former boss, Joe Messino would turn government informant. His former boss would provide information to the government about the family's daily operations. And boss Giano's crimes on top of wearing a wire to gather evidence against the newly appointed Don. This controversial case saw boss Giano fighting the death penalty or the former boss in self-proclaimed one-man murder machine. Messino was able to return home after serving less than half of his sentence. A rarity in the world of organized crime, as well as law enforcement. The case of Bastiano would have lasting effects on how cases of organized crime are prosecuted. Vinny Bastiano was born in 1959 in the Bronx section of New York. Being born into an Italian-American family, Bastiano would grow up in the same neighborhood as many former and future powerful mafia figures. Growing up in this area, it wouldn't be long until the young Bastiano started to venture into the streets. Seeing powerful men throughout the area living a lavish lifestyle outside the law, the young Bastiano would look to follow in their footsteps. Slowly evolving from a tough kid to a tough teenager over the years, Vincent would build up a reputation throughout the Bronx. Continuing down this path, Bastiano would begin associating with connected members at the time. The smart and ambitious Vincent quickly picked up the ins and outs of the illicit business, being able to participate in multiple rackets while developing some of his own. Vincent would ingratiate himself well with high-ranking members of the Bonanno family. One of these members would be the infamous Capo Patrick Patti from the Bronx de Filippo. De Filippo was said to have taken the young Bastiano under his wing after seeing his toughness and earning potential. This relationship would be solidified in 1991 when the now 30-year-old Bastiano would allegedly become an official member of the Bonanno crime family. After his making ceremony, alleged to have happened in 1991, Bastiano began his journey as a mafioso, as a soldier in the De Filippo crew. Here he would further his reputation as a good earner, allegedly becoming involved in everything from gambling, construction rackets, and even heroin trafficking. This would make the new Bonino family member start to bring in tons of money for himself, as well as the family allowing him to begin his climb up the ranks. Bastiano would allegedly use his illegal earnings to invest in legitimate businesses throughout the area. The most well-known of these investments was his alleged ownership of the Hello Gorgeous Beauty Salon. This ownership, combined with a signature style is what many have stated, led to Vincent earning the nickname, Vinny Gorgeous. Other than providing him with the nickname, this business venture showed the savvy of Bastiano. However, Bastiano's climbing up the family would not come solely from his earning ability and business mind as he would show in the coming years, that he would not shy away from violence. Being alleged to be involved in violent acts throughout the 90s, Bastiano was seen as a major enforcer throughout the family. This notion would help Vincent to become a capo in the family in 2000 when he was said to increase his violent streak. This violence would be on display in 2001 with the case of Santoro. Santoro was said to be an associate of the Bonanno family who was involved with their alleged drug dealing operation. However, Santoro would have a conflict with the new couple Bastiano, with the tension allegedly reaching a boiling point when Santoro threatened to kidnap Bastiano's son. This of course would not sit well with Bastiano and would infuriate him. This would allegedly result in Bastiano ordering a hit on Santoro. This alleged hit would take place on February 15, 2001 when Santoro was killed outside of his house. Later it would be alleged that close Bastiano associate and later government informant, Dominic Ciccoli was the one who carried out this hit. Alleged to be the start of the violence, Bastiano would closely mirror the violent rise of the boss of the family Joseph Messino. As Bastiano began climbing the ranks of the Mafia, the Bonanno family was going through turmoil. With the recent embarrassment of the Donnie Brasco infiltration and the dissolving of the leadership, Bastiano officially became a member at the same time the new boss of the family, Joe Messino would look to put the family back on track. Messino would have success in doing this and would be able to not only bring the Bonanno family back to their former glory, with some even alleging they became the most powerful family in the Mafia. 
Allegedly taking over the family in 1991, Messino would rebuild the family through an immense amount of violence. Messino would be alleged to have ordered hits on anyone he didn't trust or suspected of working with the government. Under Messino's leadership, the smart and tough Bastiano would be able to thrive, finding himself able to gain more respect and power over the years. Bastiano would eventually gain favor with Messino himself with Messino taking a liking to the ambitious Capo. This would seem to be a good thing for Bastiano when Joe Messino was arrested in 2003. Messino would attempt to run the family from jail for a few months, until he eventually promoted Bastiano to become the official boss of the family. Stepping up to this position, Bastiano would take over a shaken up family, with the effects of Messino's violent reign being seen at all levels of the family. Bastiano would look to establish control of the family over the following years, as the former boss began fighting his charges in court. Bastiano would follow the Messino playbook when it came to establishing control of the family, with the new boss being alleged to order multiple hits over the next few years. One of these hits, which would have a major impact on Bastiano's life, came in November of 2004. At this time, Bastiano would order a hit on Bonanno family associate Randall Frandi Pizzolo, with this hit being carried out successfully, would think much of it as he continued to run his family. At the same time Bastiano took out the hit on Pizzolo, Bastiano would be arrested facing multiple charges of racketeering. While facing these charges, longtime associate Dom Chicali would flip on Bastiano, providing information about his illicit operations to the government. This cooperation would lead to Bastiano facing further charges. However, the more serious charges Bastiano faced came from a surprising source. While locked up awaiting trial, Bastiano would have a conversation with former boss Joe Messino. This conversation would involve many topics but be primarily centered around the leadership of the Bonino family. In this conversation, Bastiano would allegedly allude to planning to take out Bonino Captain De Filippo and Prosecutor Greg Andres. Messino would then prob Bastiano further asking about his involvement in the murder of Randall Pizzolo. Bastiano would tell Messino he ordered the hit stating that quote he was a scumbag, he was a rat, a troublemaker, a bad kid, chased from the bars and people refused to go to bars with him. And known to Bastiano this conversation was being taped, as his former boss was wearing a wire. Messino would agree to cooperate against Bastiano earlier that year in order to avoid the potential of facing the death penalty. However, before this recording could be used, Bastiano would face and be convicted of racketeering and murder charges in 2006 and 2007 respectively. The 2007 murder charge found Vincent guilty of the murder of Santoro resulting in him receiving a life sentence. Bastiano would then be hit with more charges, as the government would finally utilize the wiretap, obtained by Joe Messino charging Bastiano with the murder of Randolph Pizzolo. Already facing life in prison Bastiano would have to get ready to defend himself once again. With the upcoming trial for the murder of Pizzolo, Bastiano would learn of his former boss's cooperation in the recorded jailhouse conversation between the two. This conversation would be used by the government as the main source of evidence in the case, leading to them bringing in Messino to testify against Bastiano in the courtroom. The former boss and the man who appointed Bastiano to the boss position would take the stand and state, that is acting boss quote you are calling all the shots, you are making captains, you are breaking captains. Messino would continue to testify to Bastiano's standing in the family as well as his involvement in the Pete Solo hit. The prosecutor would then ask Messino if Bastiano told him about ordering the Pete Solo hit. Messino would respond by stating quote yes he did he said he was a scumbag, he was a rat, a troublemaker, a bad kid. Later stating that quote Vincent Bastiano told me he killed him in November 2004. With this testimony and compounding evidence, Bastiano would be found guilty of the murder. With Bastiano's criminal record, he had the potential to face the death penalty for this murder conviction. The prosecutor on the case would push for the death penalty after his conviction, with Messino being said to have provided further testimony in furtherance of the prosecutor's case for the death penalty. However, on June 1, 2011, the jury rejected the prosecution's request for the death penalty opting for life imprisonment instead. After this conviction, Bastiano and his team would appeal the decision multiple times arguing the merit of the confession, stating that you can't plead the fifth to a boss in the mafia. Bastiano's legal team would argue that the taping violated his Fifth and Sixth Amendment rights. However, the district court would conclude that Bastiano's claims would be without merit and would affirm the previous convictions. 
After his conviction, Bastiano would be sent to Supermax Prison ADX Florence, where he was alleged to have spent most of his time in solitary confinement. Bastiano would then be transported to Florence High Penitentiary in Colorado and is now at USP Big Sandy in Kentucky. This case shows the downfall the current mafia has experienced. With the years of violent crimes catching up to members all over the country, Bastiano's crime would catch up to him when he, like so many others, involved in organized crime, was turned on by former associates. His case however would be an extreme example of this as he would have to defend himself against not only associates who turned on him, but also the boss who put him into power in the first place. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. If you enjoy the stories told on this channel, click the like and subscribe button down below. If you have any topics you'd like to see covered in future videos feel free to leave a comment. If not I will see you next episode with another story from the underworld.